And there I was. Stuck. Because the goddamn servers won't let me go to the next map. I'm trapped. I'm so sad. Why are you be like this? I just want to kill. Let me kill. Please. <laughs> Before we begin, I'm just going to let you know by starting off that there will be no story spoilers in this review. Um, if enough people like this video, I may just do a terrible retelling video. It's up to you guys. So, obviously, if you want that, leave a like on the video. Don't forget to favorite, subscribe, ring the super specific bell stuff that YouTube wants us to do. You know, standard YouTube stuff. Let's get started. Diablo 4 is a 3D isometric action role-playing game developed and published by Blizzard Entertainment and is the fourth main installment in the Diablo series. This series contains staples such as the replayable procedural generated dungeons and loot-focused character building with the addition of an open world. Players create their character from one of five playable classes, Barbarian, Druid, Necromancer, Rogue, and Sorcerer. The game will then guide them through quests and combat in the world of Sanctuary after the resurrection of the demon Lilith. Uh, with that, let's begin with my background. This is the first Diablo game I have played. I played Path of Exile for about a thousand plus hours, but I've never played a Blizzard Diablo game before. Uh, since we're not going to get into any story spoilers, I'm just going to focus on gameplay. At the beginning of the game, you're introduced to the skill tree, a nice combat tutorial tied into the story. You have six available skill slots tied to buttons 1, 2, 3, 4, right mouse click, left mouse click on PC. The game does have stellar controller support, and those keys are assigned based on the type of the controller you used. So in this case, I used a PS5 controller. Every one of the options switched over to the exact button on the controller that tied to these controls. There are a lot of intricacies later in the game regarding these moves, and the synergies with these moves are really nice. Standard items, rarity levels of common, magic, rare, legendary, and an additional rarity called sacred, which can be either rare or legendary items. There's a salvage system, where gear marked as junk can be scrapped for upgraded items or sold at a different vendor. And this game has a lot of systems with similar functions when it comes to your gear. There is a jeweler that allows you to craft gems to higher level and add gem slots to your gear and remove gems from your gear. And there's also an occultist that adds codexes of power unlocked from special dungeons around the world. There are 115 of these codexes of power that can be unlocked through the dungeons. You can also have the occultist extract aspects from your gear that you really like, destroying the item but granting you the aspect that are stored in a special inventory on your character. There's an alchemist that allows you to craft, I use the term extremely loosely, upgraded healing potions at level 1 as a tutorial, Level 10, 20, 30, 45, 60, 70, 80, and 90. From what I can tell, the top level of your character is either 90 or 100. I didn't get that high. I don't have the time. You can also craft, once again, I'm using the term loosely, additional elixirs from items that are lying around in the overworld, and all of them grant a 5% boost to XP for 30 minutes. There's also a gotcha mechanic person. They take a currency called murmuring ovals which can only be obtained by doing overworld events and you're able to pick the item you get but the item will be of a random rarity luckily this gotcha currency isn't in the cash shop it is something that can be attained in game which is lovely your character comes with five armor slots one weapon one offhand one necklace two rings there are five core stats one being your level there are 10 offensive stats 15 defensive stats Five utility stats and two PvP stats, which I did not interact with, even if it is an option right now. There's lots of things you can do once you get to the world. When you open the map, the locations you can click to see the task in that region you may want to complete. Story quests are in yellow, all side quests are in blue, standard Blizzard stuff. There's a ton of content after you beat the story. Google seems to think the story is 35 hours. One of the wikis said I think it was 50 to 60 hours. I don't know, I did so much side stuff that I don't really have a good grasp, but I've played over 100 hours at this point. However, Blizzard does not include anything in the game to tell you how long you played, so that's just my rough math on how long I think I played. Let's get into why you're really here, though. 
You want to know what was good and bad about the game. I'm going to start with the good and then move on to the bad. Because, you know, you know, you always want the good things first. The attention to the little details in the game are amazing. This is just one small example, but your character is a light source. So the developers were able to set the mood of all the dungeons or areas with the appropriate lighting that they wanted to convey what they were going for. But at the same time, they wanted you to be able to see in those areas. So your character puts off a slight light to make it a little bit easier for you as the player to see what's going on. The in-game cutscenes and cinematics are amazing. Between the rendered scenes, the lighting, the voices, the story, it in itself is just a chef's kiss. The voice acting was phenomenal, and it appears every line of dialogue was recorded. If you interact with an NPC, every line is recorded by somebody. It It's just wonderful. Everyone gave a top-notch performance on the voice acting front. Uh, the user interface is fairly easy to understand, and there's additional options you can turn on to provide you even more detail as you gain more and more experience in the game. The co-op system is awesome. As long as you and the other player are on the same world difficulty level, regardless of level, you can play together pretty much from the very first, after the first intro cutscene. It's wonderful. So my co-op partner started at level 43, and I was level 1, and we played through the almost the entire story together, some of which they got to experience twice. <laughs> the co-op was stellar because even though I was a lower level, every monster he faced was the same level as him and dropped gear appropriate for monsters that level. On the other hand, every monster that I saw was my level or higher depending on the story, but it was scaled around me specifically. And then we both gained experience equal to killing monsters of that level. You also gain a small boost to your XP when you're playing with a co-op partner. Now the fun part. The bad things. The play on Thursday June 1 edition was $99. I don't have June 1 edition money. Angry or Travis doesn't pay me in anything but exposure. This is a joke. If you take it as anything other than a joke, I'm sorry. I bought the $70 version and played on PC. I wasn't able to play until June 5th when they unlocked the servers a day early, which was lovely. All my experience was when everyone could play the game. My biggest complaint in the game is the perpetually online. That's always a constant gripe for me. Now, it's cool to see others in the overworld and helping them do the group quests and knocking those out with people and getting the loot. I love that. What I don't love was the server stability. On PC, there were persistent crashes from the server just being like, no, I'm not doing this today. Oh. That's the first crash of the night, ladies and gentlemen. You would zone into one of the main cities and you would walk out of the portal and the game would just freeze. And now you have to wait to see if the server decides, nah, you didn't actually make it here and you're getting kicked. Or you get to unlag for a second and then you're ready to go. Several times we got stuck on it. Now, they've slowly patched it to make it a little bit better, but they haven't fixed it. So now when you zone in, the, you still have that long lead time, but you're less likely to crash. If you crash during a story dungeon, you are going to do the entire story dungeon from the beginning again. I had to do that for four story parts. I'm not a happy camper. There were times where me and my co op partner would just bungee from each other because of the servers. Also, when you first zone into a new zone, there's a small delineating marker that you cannot see on the map, but your co op partner is going to vanish for about a split second as you pass through. The bungeeing was not pleasant. There was a maintenance patch on June 10th that changed the collision of the game. So, for the final story push where we finished Act 5 and 6, I was constantly getting caught on invisible terrain and I was getting super irritated with it. I appreciate there's a character customization, and it, it can be changed any time in town. I just wish it had more options to alter the character to make them more unique. The hairstyles and faces were fairly limited. My final big issue was there's one boss fight in a large room, and half the room is covered by the entrance overhang. While shadowed by this overhang, you can literally cannot see the enemy attacks, only the silhouette of you and the enemy. That was not a fun boss fight, because the boss decided he wanted to stand in the one corner where you could not see his attacks. And that was frustrating. It's frustrating, because you can tell there were high levels of detail and attention paid to very important, you know, very minor things that were lovely. 
But this company runs one of the world's largest MMOs in the world and cannot get solid server performance on their perpetually online game. It, it blows me away. I don't understand. I do have two other minor complaints that may be fixed in the future. They're super small missing features. I have no way to tell you how long I've played Diablo 4. I can't tell how long my characters played, and Battle.net won't tell me how long I've played on Diablo 4. This is a minor annoyance. Another small issue that really bothers me is they spent all this time on these wonderful cutscenes and cinematics, and I can't rewatch them. I have to literally play through the entire game again to rewatch them. This is a travesty, especially because how solid the cutscenes are. Overall, I'm going to give Diablo 4 a 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed the story. Uh, the servers are steadily improving, and I'm sure the new game hype dies down, and additional patches are done, and additional maintenances. These issues probably will not persist. What did y'all think? Did you enjoy the game? What would you like to see improved? What build did you go with? Leave a comment below. That being said, thanks for coming out today. If you haven't already and you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and the channel if you haven't already. Please, subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye!